Sometimes life imitates art, and just because we don't have spaceships that can achieve interstellar travel or lightsabers no matter how much we want them, doesn't mean that not every gadget or piece of technology seen in classic sci-fis hasn't come true. And in fact, there are a number of devices that were once seen as fiction that are now part of our everyday life. In this video, we'll take a look at some sci-fis that correctly predicted the future and how their technology came to life. So, while Skynet hasn't risen up to exterminate all humans, yet anyway, and there are no Terminators traveling back in time to kill children, that doesn't mean that all the technology seen in the Terminator series hasn't come to life. During the war between machines and humans, the machines have in their arsenal drones that are capable of firing weapons at soldiers from afar. Of course, not only are drones currently capable of spying on you when you're in the bathroom, but unmanned military drones are also capable of firing missiles from afar in current military conflict. In fact, drones are seemingly becoming more and more prevalent, and it's probably not going to be long until we receive an Amazon package from one of those flying rascals, because let's face it, we don't need the further shame of human interaction when we're buying useless things on the internet that we don't need. <laughs> now to sound like the old man that I am, back in my day when I was a young lad, cell phones were indestructible bricks that you used to play snake on, and perhaps every now and then you'd make a phone call to your mom and ask if you could sleep over at a buddy's house to play Halo all night. You know, the good old days. Now, cell phones are an integral part of our everyday life, and almost everyone has one. Unfortunately, even your weird uncle who's into crazy conspiracy theories. But before they became so popular, and well before the days of the Nokia 3310, they found their start in an unlikely place. Star Trek, the original series. Well, kind of. While they of course weren't called cell phones, Kirk and Co. used handheld communications devices to well, communicate with each other. But it wasn't until seven years later that the original cell phone was actually invented, the Motorola Dynatac. This cell phone, which cost thousands of dollars and weighed around 2.4 pounds, meaning it wasn't exactly something you could slip into your pocket, was invented by Martin Cooper, who apparently completed the creation in just 90 days. Many rumors have suggested that Cooper's main inspiration was the devices seen in Star Trek, but according to the man himself, the actual inspiration came from a comic strip called Dick Tracy, in which the character used a wrist two-way radio. Now we mentioned some Star Wars technology, and as we said, while we unfortunately don't have lightsabers and fortunately Death Stars, but then again who knows what Elon's up to, there is some Star Wars tech that has come true. Holograms. Of course, in the original Star Wars, Princess Leia sent a message to Obi-Wan Kenobi via hologram, which is a 3D image created from the interference of light beams from a laser onto a 2D surface. Nowadays, hologram experts can create real-life images that move in the air, like a 3D printer for light through the use of lasers. Holograms have been used to bring celebrities back to life, such as Robert Kardashian and Tupac Shakur, with a four-minute holograph performance of the rapper at Coachella reportedly costing $10 million to produce. While the hologram technology still isn't quite as advanced as it was in Star Wars, we're perhaps getting a little closer. Lightfield Lab's Solid Light is aiming to recreate objects in the real world with light, using a 27-inch monitor with a 2.4 billion pixel count by causing waves of light to interact at a specific point, with the interaction being visible to your eye, kind of like a sci-fi holodeck. By doing this a lot, they can create the illusion of an entire object made of light. Bionic limbs are another technology in the real world that may not be quite as advanced as it is in Star Wars, but we're getting seemingly closer every day. Researchers from the Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta have been developing a way for amputees to control each of their prosthetic fingers using an ultrasonic sensor, which is similar to the way that Luke uses his bionic arm after losing it in a fight with Vader. With 2019 now come and gone, we can be thankful that the world isn't in quite as bad a shape as it is in Ridley Scott's Blade Runner, and LA hasn't quite turned into the Hades landscape. Although admittedly, flying cars would have been pretty cool. One of the most eye-catching elements of the dystopian LA skyline are the massive digital billboards that can be seen on the side of skyscrapers. Billboards have actually been around since the 1830s, admittedly when road travel was a lot slower than it is now, and while there was an attempted ban on billboards in the US in the 60s, 
companies managed to find a number of loopholes to get around it which allowed the industry to grow until they eventually turned digital. Companies started playing around with the idea of massive digital billboards in the early 2000s, with the first ones coming to the forefront between 2002 and 2005. And they have grown exponentially since then, with digital billboards surprisingly much cheaper than the classic ones. Anyone who has ever been to Times Square will know how much of a sensory overload the digital billboards can be, and they are pretty much everywhere you look these days. Stanley Kubrick's epic 2001 A Space Odyssey was way ahead of the curve in many, many ways, and its stunning visuals still hold up to this day. While we still haven't traversed the galaxy like they do in the movie, commercial space travel has become a thing, with the likes of companies such as Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin and Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic. But that's not all. In the film, Dr. David Bowman and Dr. Frank Poole watch news updates from their flat-screen computers, which they call news pads, which just so happen to look a lot like modern-day tablets. Interestingly enough, in 2010, when Apple claimed that they invented the technology through the release of the iPad, Samsung disputed this, saying that Stanley Kubrick and Sir Arthur C. Clarke did by including the device in 2001 A Space Odyssey, and they even took them to court over it, but this eventually led nowhere. Speaking of tablets, one of the functions of the device is making a video call through a platform of your choosing. In 2001, these tablets are used to make video calls back to Earth, with, fun piece of trivia for you, the girl in the scene actually being Kubrick's real-life daughter. Another feature of 2001 is the Space Station 5, with space stations becoming a reality 30 years later with the International Space Station in 1998. Now there have been a number of movies that have featured driverless cars, but the most notable one is the 1990 movie Total Recall, and the scene where Arnold Schwarzenegger's character Douglas Quaid, while on the run from some bad guys on Mars, ends up jumping in the back of a car. In the front of the vehicle, instead of a human driver, is Johnny Cab, which is the car's onboard computer system which can take the passenger wherever they need to go, providing they give a real address. Now, in real life, there are a number of companies looking into creating driverless cars, such as Google, Waymo, and even NASA, with them saying it would help improve the technologies of robotic vehicles on extraterrestrial surfaces such as the Moon or Mars. But one of the most notable instances of driverless cars are modern-day Teslas, which of course aren't fully driverless, but can go on autopilot, sticking between the lines on a highway and regulating speed by monitoring other vehicles around them by using cameras and motion sensors. Now, the Back to the Future series is an absolute classic. And while not all the technology exists today, you know, like time-traveling DeLoreans, there are some gadgets and gizmos from the series that are being implemented into real life, even if they're not fully functional. For instance, hoverboards, which of course you see in the second movie. Now, while there are hoverboards around right now that roam around on wheels, you know, like the one Mike Tyson fell off of, there are some actual flying hoverboards in development as we speak, and there are some real, albeit not too practical, models in the world right now. One of the first real ones created was back in 2015 by Arx Pax, a company based in California. It generates a magnetic field, which in turn creates an eddy current, which then creates another opposing magnetic field, although to actually get any lift, you'll need to be over a copper hover park. Lexus also created their very own hoverboard, which also floats above the ground slightly. Nike have also created a pair of self-tying shoes like the one seen in the movie, while biometric scanning has also become a thing, just like the moment where Biff Tannen pays for a taxi with his fingerprint. Now, just like tablets and cell phones, smartwatches have become increasingly prevalent in society. And while smartwatches have become more popular since the release of the Apple Watch in 2015, smartwatches have actually been around since as early as 1998. Well, in real life, anyway. In fiction, they actually appeared a lot earlier than that. In fact, smartwatches were a common device used in the 1962 animated comedy The Jetsons, which of course followed the futuristic family. Again, though, still waiting on that flying car. Now, a similar device can be seen in another animated comedy, Futurama. Leela's wrist low jackimator can do a number of things the smartwatch can do, such as play games and make calls. VR is another technology that's evolving rapidly, and while we're not in a fully automated online world just yet, that we're aware of anyway, VR can help blur the line between reality and non-reality. Now, the concept of VR isn't exactly a new thing, but the time it really came into the spotlight 
was in the original Matrix movie, although admittedly there are several differences. Still though, with the way the technology's going, maybe we will be living in the Matrix one day. Or maybe we already are. As we mentioned earlier, 2002 was the era of the Nokia 3310, and looking back at it now, it was a long way from your modern day iPhone or Galaxy, but they were simpler, happier days. Also in 2002, the movie Minority Report, based on a 1956 story by author Philip K. Dick, had some pretty, at the time, mind-blowing technology. And in one scene, John Anderton, played by Tom Cruise, uses a gesture-based computer system as he swipes and zooms through multiple screens. Now, modern-day cell phones and tablets mimic this, and most smartphones today incorporate a similar touchscreen technology, with devices like the iPhone having its pull, zoom, and swipe functions. Also, Minority Report coined the term pre-crime, and in the movie, psychic precog triplets, whose brains are directly interfaced with police computers, provide law enforcement with a view of crimes before they happen. While of course, we don't have psychic triplets in the real world, law enforcement do use lots and lots of data in order to prevent crimes, such as using statistics to determine which roads and neighborhoods to patrol more frequently. In fact, reportedly one-third of all U.S. cities either use or are considering predictive policing. And finally, this isn't sci-fi or a gadget, but a fun piece of trivia I wanted to include. The reason why we call junk emails spam is because of a famous Monty Python sketch, first broadcast in 1970, where a couple ordering breakfast is confronted with a menu full of spam. <laughs> 